this thing is looking shabby. And the quickest, cheapest way to make it look good and get all the salty sea air and containerness off of it is to give it a quick tea cut. So I figured, just for a little bit of elbow grease, why not? In the previous video, I explained how I shipped my Defender from South Africa to the UK. I'll link it here. The sea air wrecked the already dull paintwork, but there's a simple fix. I'm just going to give it a wash, well not a wash, I'm going to give it a rinse with a clean rag and some clean water. I'm not going to put any soap in because I don't want that to affect the teacup. Don't know if it will, haven't researched it, but I'm going for it. I guess my thinking was that I didn't want any sand or dirt to cause deep scratches while I rubbed away there with the teacup. I'm not sure how much of a difference a teacup's going to make, but it's got to look better than what it does when I'm finished. It has to. Right, tea cut. Now, I already had some tea cut original and two clean cloths. One for application and one for polishing. But if you go out and buy the stuff, it's just a few bucks. And since I didn't have the budget to repaint the whole car, I can put a bit of life back into the original paint with just a bit of hard rubbing. It's basically an abrasive fluid that cuts the thinnest layer of paint off and brings back a bit of shine. I hope that's normal. Kind of like Sif in the UK or Handy Andy in South Africa. Gee, my arms are really stuffed. I've only done the bonnet. It's probably some people watching going, yeah, predicted that. Before you even open that bottle of teacup, you're wondering if I have a little buffer machine or something. Nope. Because I'm cheap and an idiot. And while he's doing that, I thought it's about time to explain why I love Land Rovers so much. It started with a dream. A dream to explore, to drive into the unknown and to cross the entire continent of Africa. And in my opinion, no other vehicle says African adventure like a Land Rover. So a few years ago, my wife Laura and I decided to do it. We bought a Discovery One and left England and drove to Cape Town, following the Nile south. But first, we had to get through Europe. Okay, done, shut shop. Bye well. We bumbled our way through mainland Europe for about a month as we learned how to become overlanders. Gentle preparation for travelling through Africa. And during our trip, I wrote a three-part feature for Land Rover Owner International magazine and our story was really well received. We were budget overlanders and I used the trip to do a photographic project using an instant film camera. More on that in a bit. But because we had done it in a Land Rover, we had joined some kind of fraternity. People were interested in how a Discovery 1 from 1994, which cost £1,500, could drive from England all the way through Africa and down into Cape Town. But let's check in on the other guy quickly. He seems to be doing a good job, so let's get back to the story. And as I mentioned earlier, I did a photo project using an instant film camera, so I could immediately give a photo to whoever I'd used as a subject as a way to say thank you. I attracted a few sponsors and the project led to lots of other work, as well as creating a beautiful portrait of how people change from one side of the planet to the other. I guess what I'm saying is that a Land Rover or a camera are an amazing passport into adventure. You just need to go. <laughs> this 
city in Czech South Africa. Cheers, what? And of course, we have to have a fire. <laughs> It's just mental. People carting stuff on. I love it. There's like no room for any of the passengers whatsoever on these barges. And then look at the space that we've got. It seems so wrong. These adventures, if you allow yourself to have them, not only change your life, they change you. There are so many more stories from this trip. Perhaps next time. Back at HQ, I was completing the last of the teacup. Well, I tell you, you only do that to a car that you love. I think I've worn through both of my rotator cuffs, buffing that thing out. Anyway, I'm super pleased with how it turned out. I knew it wasn't gonna be like a perfect job, but it's looking great, I think. I think it's really transformed the car. There's a bunch of stuff I still need to do. I think up next is probably some engine upgrades, and then straight after that, I've got to work on getting this thing watertight because it leaks like a sieve, and the driver's seat is currently soaking wet. Not good. So stay tuned. If you enjoy these videos, please let me know if you are enjoying them in the comments below. I've got a plane to catch in a few hours, a couple hours, so um, excuse me while I go and pack. Thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe if you want to.